What is up my warriors and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about building stronger knees. This one is one of the more requested comments that I get in the form of uh, my knees are weak, my knees kind of cave in, uh, I've got some pain in my knees, that sort of thing. So today we're going to go over how you can actually strengthen your knees as well as challenging a few myths that are surrounded about it. Quick disclaimer, if you have got pain or if you have got an injury in your knee and you're using this video to help aid with that, number one, just go see somebody in person. It's worth just paying a professional and getting things addressed properly. I've learned this one the hard way. This video is gonna be a little bit longer, I think, than usual because I actually wrote a script for this one. I spent quite a bit of time researching, looking into this one, and it's just something that I wanted to address properly. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and relax, and let's jump straight into this. So we're gonna start off with some myths and preconceptions when it comes to knee strengthening. When I was researching for this video, a lot of the recommendations out there are kind of these banded low intensio physio based exercises which if you have just ruptured your ACL and, and physically can't use your knee probably are useful but if you have a normal functioning knee that just needs a little bit of strengthening and you need to strengthen that it's just not going to do anything it's not a high enough intensity it's just faff you can't go wrong with getting strong and balancing on a BOSU ball isn't going to do that when it comes to strengthening a knee for prevention reasons for helping you know to prevent ACL injuries or even LCL, MCL, meniscus tears, patella tracking, all of that sort of stuff. We need to do two things. We need to strengthen the structures around the knee and we need to strengthen them through a full range of motion. We need to mobilize as well, not just focus on stability. Stability is yes important, but this is addressed through proper strength training. We don't need to do stabilizing drills. There aren't muscles that are stabilizers and muscles that are prime movers. This is a common myth and really a whole nother video by itself. Let's focus on what exactly we need to strengthen and mobilize. We really need to consider upstream and downstream of this knee joint to get a well-rounded idea of this. So this is gonna include the ankle and the hips. So we're gonna be incorporating movements that are gonna work around these, but we just wanna primarily focus on strengthening the quads, the hamstrings, and also the calves. The drills I am gonna share are gonna be primarily strength bias, but they're gonna have some element of mobility in them as well. So we're gonna get the best of both worlds without doing 20 different exercises. This is just about being focused and specific with our choices of exercises. Because this channel is a bodyweight channel and also because of the current circumstances with lockdown and not being able to access gyms, I'm gonna give you the main exercises, which are gonna be a lot of weight training exercises, but I'll give you a bodyweight version and alternative as well. First, let's consider the quads. The quads are very important for knee strength. Specifically, we're gonna be focusing on the BMO, the vastus medialis oblique, that little teardrop muscle in the quad. Now, this isn't the be all end all, and you can't isolate this. It's gonna work in conjunction with the quad in general, but working and training this in its specific patterns can help improve things like knee valgus, so when that knee drops inwards, and also improve patella tracking. It's gonna be recruited most in the top and bottom portions of that knee flexion range, so think the top of the squat and right at the deep bottom of the squat. So because of this, I'm gonna recommend two drills in which we can strengthen both of these ranges of motion. The first drill is the Poliquin Step Up. Now this drill is great because it's slightly lower intensity and it's great for just introducing a person to better contracting, better understanding the pattern to get more recruitment in that VMO muscle. Because the range of motion is smaller, we can do sort of like 20 or 30 reps here, so it gets lots of blood flow in there as well. For this one, we wanna ensure that the foot is angled to about 30 degrees, so just basically shoving something underneath that heel so it's elevated and the weight is on the balls of the feet. And then this lets the knee track over the toes. Yes, this is a good thing, and it's very important for strengthening the knees. We also wanna elevate the feet by about 15 centimeters, but really you can kind of go with whatever feels comfortable. The higher that is, the harder it's gonna be, but we wanna keep it to a certain height because we wanna focus just on that top range of motion. The focus here should be kept on keeping the hip square. This is gonna help us also train that glute media, something that's often weak. And then when we lower down, we're gonna try and touch just the heel to the ground. This means we're not gonna have any assistance from the toes of that non-working leg. We also want to try and avoid that knee dropping into the middle and just keep it tracking over the toes. A slightly more advanced but similar version of this would be something called the Peterson Step Up. This one is a little bit more technical and requires more coordination, so I'd do it for less reps, something like 10 to 15 repetitions. But it acts in a very similar way to the Poliquin Step Up, except it introduces a little bit of that gastric nemius as well, which again, crosses the knee joint. It's another important muscle when it comes to knee strengthening. Rather than go into detail on this exercise because it is a little bit complicated, I'll just link to a video that shares and goes through this one in more detail in the description 
down below. All right, so that is the top range done. The second part, we need to look at that bottom range, that bottom portion of the knee flexion position. Now for this one, I'm gonna recommend probably one of my favorite leg exercises, and that is the front foot elevated split squat. Now I know some of you are gonna see this exercise and you're gonna be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're recommending this. This is gonna cause injuries. Look at that knee going over the toe. This is gonna to be so bad. Your knee's just gonna explode and burst out everywhere, which is just not the case. As we mentioned earlier, the knees going over the toes is an essential part of strengthening the knee. And to be honest with you, it's just generally part of human life. Just watch yourself going up the stairs or walking or anything. For example, the knee is gonna track over the toe. Actually, if you train in a limited range and don't go into that position, you're not ever gonna strengthen it. And it has actually been shown that doing deep squats, working that deep knee flexion position can actually help reduce the risk of injury. And if you don't believe me, then I'll link to a study uh, demonstrating that one in the description down below, as well as a few other studies that I've used to inform today's video. I'm not gonna talk any more about knees over toes, gonna to work on a full video to kind of kill that myth off. Back to the split squat. I've actually covered this in an entire video all by itself, so I'll link to that one down below if you want some more detail about it. But essentially this drill is gold. It's gonna both develop strength and mobility at the same time. You wanna consider this drill as an escalator. So it's gonna go diagonally up and down as opposed to an elevator, which travels vertically up and down. By having this diagonal movement, we get to have that knee going past the toe. We're gonna to challenge the ankle and the hip mobility, but we're also gonna strengthen the ankle and the quad in this deep knee flexion, that deep squat position, which you know is gonna effectively target the VMO and the quad, as well as the ankle. Essentially, this drill is an 11 out of 10 and my clients know it well. So those are the, the two slash three quad ones. Now let's take a look at the hamstrings. The hamstrings are a crucial element for knee strengthening and often overlooked to be honest. We focus a lot on the quad in the rehab for any knee issues. And the hamstring it has two functions. It's gonna be involved in, yes, knee flexion, but it's also gonna be involved in hip extension. So again, like the quads, we're gonna have two exercises so we can hit both of these patterns. First, we have the hamstring curl, which is gonna primarily work the lower portion of the hamstrings. Now this one is quite gym reliant, but I have got a good home option for you. It's quite simple really, if you have access to a gym, just do a leg curl. Lying or standing is definitely the best option if you have a variety of machines, but seated is okay. As the hamstrings are predominantly fast twitch based, we wanna keep the reps a little bit lower. Something like four to eight reps work well with a nice controlled tempo, especially on that negative portion, but you can go up to maybe 10 repetitions if you want to. For the people at home, we have a couple of options. First of all, would be slider hamstring curls. I'm a big fan of this one. I've been giving it to a lot of clients during lockdown, because it's just very, very easy to implement. The focus here should be placed on trying to keep the glutes engaged and trying to push the hips up during the entirety of the movement. But the only limitation with this is because of the way it is performed, the hardest portion of the movement is the bottom, the most extended position of the knee, and the easiest portion is the top. So to make sure we can effectively hit both ends of this strength curve, we can also add in some banded hamstring curls. With the band, it's gonna get harder the more we stretch the band and that will be in that top range of motion. So you can use the, both of these ones set up pretty straightforward, pretty simply at home to get an effective hamstring curl based strengthening session done. Just for an honorable mention, I'll also add the natural hamstring curl, although this one can be hard to set up and can be uncomfortable on the knees, but it's a good option as well. These should really be the bread and butter of your hamstring development. Second, we need to look at hip extension. There is an element of hip extension used in the slider hamstring curl, so there's a bonus there. But for this one, we can simply use the humble back extension. Such an incredible exercise and such a simple exercise that a lot of people do. This one is fantastic for training both the hamstrings, also the glutes, but just generally that whole posterior chain to effectively strengthen them. Care should be taken here to focus on the movement coming from the hips rotating, keeping a neutral spine to effectively train that top, that higher portion of the hamstrings that inserts into the glutes, as well as obviously the glutes and the lower back themselves. This one can be done for slightly higher reps, but again, keeping it sort of eight, 10, 12 repetitions should work well. But that is basically it. Four simple exercises, but four very effective exercises for both strengthening and mobilizing any sort of structures around the knee that's gonna help improve your knee strength. Definitely the key takeaways here is don't be afraid of knees over toe. Don't be afraid of actually strengthening the knees, using something intense to strengthen them. Squats are a fantastic way to strengthen the knees. You can simply add these exercises to your existing routines, just replace them wherever it feels appropriate, add them in, and you're gonna feel those knees get stronger and then consequently more stable. I'm sure this one might be slightly controversial, 
I understand why. So uh, if you do have any questions or if you wanted to share your opinion, please do so in the comments section down below. When this video first goes live, I'll be taking a look through the comments, replying to the ones that I can do. And I'm sure also people from the community will join in with the conversation as well. If you just enjoyed this video, you can always hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button so you can join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. Don't miss out any more future videos. But that has basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode and probably a future episode on that knees over toe thing soon. Have a strong week and peace.